Welcome everyone, it has been a while, hasn't it? With my consistent streams coming back now on Twitch, uh, I think I've streamed almost every day of April. I have not been able to do the consistent YouTube uploads, but I haven't forgot about you guys because I'm still trying to come up with any way possible to add in some time to come up with a new video. Which brings us to today's video, which is crazy. Just yesterday, I somehow managed to stumble on something that we had thought was always to be slower, but it turns out it's actually faster. And it all has to do with the fact that you use the P-Wing in 5.1. You no longer use the Fire Flower in the Fortress in World 5. So that leads a little bit of time. Um, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna time how long a Hammer Brother battle takes. And then I'm gonna show you guys exactly what this new potential route change is. So let's jump right in and start timing things. All right, so we have our timer, we have our game feed up, and we are gonna go straight to World 5 to time these Hammer Brothers. Okay, now that we're here, first thing you wanna note is that these Hammer Brother battles down here is the exact same type of battle as in the clouds. So it's perfectly fine to be able to time these Hammer Brothers instead of having to go up to the cloud and time those. The second thing you need to note is that each Hammer Brother movement on the overworld map is 0.5. So we're just going to stop the timer after the first Hammer Brother does his first movement or second movement. If, I, if he goes across level 3, I'll keep the movement of 2. If he goes down, I'll keep the movement of 1. But we might hear a movement of 4. All, all we need to know is that we would just keep adding 0.5 per movement. Now, the goal is to start the timer as soon as I get on the tile for the Hammer Brother because the idea is to avoid a Hammer Brother altogether. So we're gonna start the timer as soon as we land on the Hammer Brother and then there's gonna be two things that happen. Either you get a top pattern or a low pattern. That is what is called a top pattern. That's where both Hammer Brothers go up top. That is slightly slower. A low pattern is when they're both down like this. That is slightly faster. So we have our safe state. So let's go ahead and we're gonna time it right now. So we got a low pattern, optimal chest grab. We're gonna wait to see a movement of one or two. We got a movement of two. Well, we heard a movement of four, but we actually got a movement of two. And we clocked in pretty close to about 11.5 seconds for that Hammer Brother, which means that the most optimal Hammer Brother pattern or timing that you can get would be al about 11 seconds flat. Let's, you know, give or take a couple things here and there. Uh, if I had got a movement of one there, it would have been 0.5 less, right? So a little tiny bit under 11. And that's good to note. So considering we have the 11.5 with a movement of two, if we got a low pattern with a movement of four, worst case scenario in that situation would be 12.5. What happens if we get top pattern though, which is slower? So let's take a look at top pattern, try and get one. Okay, so we got top pattern. Uh, let's see what hammer brother movement we get here. Okay. So that was a movement of one. We heard a movement of four. And if a movement of one is also, so it's very interesting because low pattern movement of two is the same time as high pattern movement of one. Obviously, you know, that, that kind of makes sense. So we need to add 1.5 seconds here. So worst possible case scenario is 13 seconds for a Hammer Brother battle. That's the number that we're thinking about. 13 seconds for a Hammer Brother battle. Now, what's interesting, and this is where the giant oversight... Most of the time saves in Mario 3 are massive oversights. We forget to do something, or in this case, what happened was is that we changed the route a few years ago to use a P-Wing in 5-1. And what happened there is that forced us to do the Fortress right there with Fire Mario. And that was our base foundation. There's no reason to not grab the P-Wing in 5-1. It... Right? It, it doesn't even matter if you use the, the music box on the Hammer Brother or the Piranha Plant, it's constantly net positive. I mean, 5-2 with the tail is actually faster than fire anyway. So you're really only losing about four, four and a half seconds getting the P-Wing and getting the music box in 5-1, which as we just saw, worst case scenario, Hammer Brother, 13 seconds. And also the Piranha Plant stage in World 4, about 14 seconds, 14 and a half if you don't do it perfect. So there's never ever a reason to not grab that. The only reason to not grab the music box in 5-1 is if you're not comfortable with adding either an additional clip in World 7 or you don't want to wall jump. 
Luckily, if you don't want to wall jump, you can do 610 fire route, but you don't have to worry about anything like that. It's, it's essentially either you want to clip or wall jump or do the P-Wing. So that's, that's really good. But anyways, the history of how this route changed is that because we did that and now we're fire Mario, we are actually now supposed to compare 5-3 Big Mario versus Fortress Big Mario, which we didn't do. No one's done that. We always compared 5-3 to Fire because back then that's when we were doing the comparisons. On the clock, we're, I'm gonna show you, on the clock it's gonna be 10 seconds, pretty even, very close to 10 seconds. However, when you beat this level, the lock breaks, then the Hammer Brothers move, and the lock breaking is a little bit under a second. We did some timing for it. So, yeah, let me show you the timing for the Fortress. We'll do the timing of, as, as soon as you start the level. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to only let the Hammer Brother move one tile. Much like before, we're not going to worry about if we get a movement of three or four or anything like that. We just stop the timer as soon as the Hammer Brother does one movement because they always have to at least move once. Very easy. 30 seconds. Exactly. That was pretty good. 30 seconds exactly. Hammer Brothers did a movement of one. We stopped the timer. Of course, of course it's very possible that I'm behind or ahead by a couple frames when I start and when I stop. But we're talking frames here. So, now that we have a base foundation of how long the fortress takes this big Mario, let's take a look at 5-3 and see how long that takes. Looking good here. What are we what are we dealing with? Wait for the Hammer Brothers to move once. So, so being as we actually added in the lock breaking animation with the Hammer Brother movement, the movement of one, it's about 10 seconds slower. That's about that's about as as much as you can do. It's not, I mean, if you mess up 5-3, but I mean if you mess up any level, right? We're looking for the time. We just saw worst case scenario Hammer Brother is 13 seconds. So the reason why this can be beneficial is that in warpless runs, you always see us use a music box right here. We will use the music box, do the fortress, and go to the Twisty Castle. However, if the Hammer Brothers are marked at the very bottom, or even the situation, if they are where they are right now before I do 5-3, and the one moves down and the other one moves down, then I can get to the Twisty Castle without using the music box. The music box I got from 5-1, which means I don't have to fight the Skybro. And that's where the time saves comes into play. But not just that, there's a couple other little trinkets of time save, a couple little things here and there. Number one, in the clouds, because we're not Fire Mario, it's possible to fight the Hammer Brother as Big Mario, which is a little bit slower than fighting with Fire Flower. We're not gonna time it because that's a that's a randomness thing. You don't always fight them. But one thing we are going to time is the difference in map movements. As you can see, the difference from the pipe doing the fortress is longer. So there is also a time save. So let's go ahead and time that right now. We're gonna start. Right there. About 2.66 it took to move. I didn't do any bumps. You know, I didn't frame perfect. It's possible for you to frame perfect. It's possible for you to bump. Sure, of course. But that was a pretty good timing. So let's go ahead and try it from the pipe to the Twisty Castle. 1.46. So a little over a second faster just for that. Very interesting. Another thing that we need to note is that when you do the 5-1 route with the music box, you grab the music box from 5-1, you use it on these Hammer Brothers, then you grab a music box from the sky, which means you have to go into your inventory one extra time. 
Now in your inventory, it's one le one input to the left, your music box, that's where it always is. So if we time going into the inventory, we can do right there. That's almost another second right there from inventory. It's a weird little timing. It's very hard to time, but it's been known amongst the community that one inventory movement and going in and selecting an item is generally pretty close to a second. So that's pretty close to just two seconds in optimizations of menuing and map movements. There's a couple other things to note, mainly one other thing, and I'll see you at the top in the clouds. All right, now that we're in the clouds, this is a great example of, of something to show you. If you're doing a normal warpless run and you have to fight that hammer brother that's on the left side of the fortress, well, if you beat the fortress, what's gonna happen is that he's gonna move up, which means you're gonna have to move two extra map movements, then back another two. And we've already timed how long that takes. Let's, let's take another look. Look at that, that's 1.2 seconds. Now, that's not guaranteed in any run. That's not how it goes in Mario 3 Warpless. Anyone who watches knows that everything I'm saying is all based around, you know, a lot of RNG facts, except the menuing and the overworld map movements. There are a few things we can guarantee. If you do 5-3, you don't have to worry about doing these extra map movements. That's a net positive. You don't have to worry about doing the Hammer Brother. That's a net positive. Let's, let's go back down to the bottom. You see how we're down here at the bottom? Well, if one Hammer Brother is where Mario is right now, and the other Hammer Brother is directly across from him, if they both move up to the space where that Hammer Brother is on the right, they're gonna do a movement of four. And how long is a movement of four? That's two seconds. So, if you do 5-3, you eliminate the possibility for Hammer Brothers to do movements of four down here, because a Hammer Brother cannot cross over a spade card game. They can't cross this tile, so they're just stuck to these two, four, five tiles right there. One thing to note though, if you are able to skip the Hammer Brothers by doing 5-3, the Hammer Brothers weren't actually close to doing movements of four, but you still have about four or five levels up into the clouds. So anyone who knows Hammer Brothers knows that they're all over the place. So in conclusion, this route is more optimal, leads you up for better potential RNG, not the RNG you need to get it to work, the RNG that can take place afterwards. That's a net positive, less map movements, less, less inventories, and it's just overall a better quality of life direction to go in. However, the issue is, is that if you go for it and the Hammer Brothers down here move in your way, you're gonna lose that time. The interesting thing though, is that you can try and get the P-Wing down here and not use the music box still, and still avoid the music box in the clouds and use that P-Wing in a better spot. So it's kind of almost an overall uh, better decision to make as long as you don't mess up 5-3. But you do need the Hammer Brothers to work in your favor. Luckily, last little point of information, when you beat 5-2, the Hammer Brothers have given you enough information to let you know whether you should go for it or not, right? Let's say I beat 5-2 and the Hammer Brothers are where they are right now. I, if I beat 5-3, I can't skip the bros. That's impossible. So I already know not to go for it, right? So it, it gives you so much information. It's only a gamble if you're if they're almost out of your way and you know that they can move out of your way after 5-3. That's the only time that it's gonna work, so. So look at that, a little extra route change. Who would have thought that doing 5-3 has the potential? It just has the potential of being a couple seconds faster. And I mean, look at the warpless run. We need these seconds. I mean, I don't want to go for door three in Jesus clip. I would much rather get to world five on a semi-good semi, pa semi pace run and take a chance at something to try and maybe get something better. But um, yeah, let me know what you all think in the comments below. Uh, let me know if I missed anything. And uh, yeah, this is fairly new. I was actually just working on this yesterday and I was able to confirm that we are able to actually save time if the stars align. Um, last thing to note is that if you do skip the bros down here without using the music box, you still have to skip the bros in the sky. So, uh, don't forget that. And, uh, thanks everyone for watching. And again, I'm going to work really hard to keep giving you guys more YouTube content. I'm always thinking of ideas, uh, but I'm also trying to stay true to my, uh, live stream. I have, I've got a lot of fans split up all over the place. I got my YouTube crowd. I got my Twitch crowd. I'm, I'm just trying to find a nice, comfortable spot. So thanks everyone for watching. And yeah, we learned something new. Take it easy guys. Woo!